In 30 days, I gained 20,000 plus followers on Instagram, no paid ads, no shout outs, all organic, and I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it. Since we are talking about Instagram today, in this video, go follow me on Instagram so you can see all the strategies and tactics that I'm gonna give you in today's video that I'm doing currently right now. Before we dive into the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel because we are on a mission to make social media simple and I wanna crush 100,000 on this channel. Number one, reels. Reels are where it's at. Now, if you're someone who's watching this video and you're like, reels are oversaturated, there's so many people posting reels, it's noisy, you're right, and you're also wrong. There is a way to stand out on reels and I would implore you to follow this exact formula that I've created. Emotion plus curiosity plus relevance equals virality. If you do want me to make a full video on my viral hook formula, let me know in the comments below. The way you break through the noise of reels is by making your content interesting. And let's be honest, your content is probably boring. Before you go into the comments with pitchforks and axes and torches, I want you to understand this one thing and write it down. You have to objectively look at your content through the eye of the consumer and ask yourself these questions. Would I watch this and is this interesting for me? Here's a method you can use. It's called my three W's method to ensure that your content is bulletproof. Who is this for? What problem are you solving? And why should someone care? Before you even think about making a reel, let alone a piece of content, you must have a clear answer to all three W's. If not, do not make it. Otherwise, you'll become like 99% of other people on social media who are just getting drowned out. Number two, photos. Photos are still relevant today, and yes, they still have power. I personally refer to photos as static content, meaning it's not moving, there's no video component to it, it's just a piece of content that you have to read and consume. Now, the reason static pieces of content work is because it's a different form of consumption than a video. Sometimes, let's just be honest, you don't wanna watch a video. And sometimes, reading a tweet or reading a post does the job. I wanna share with you a couple photos on Instagram that did really well for me and I wanna read them off to you. So the first one is the content cheat code you need to know. Make a YouTube video, break the video into shorts, post them to YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram, break up the shorts into tweets, use the YouTube video as a script for a blog or article, here's your blueprint, do something with it. This post, as I'm reading it right now on Insights, generated 18,850 likes, 462 comments, 7,682 shares, and 35,614 saves. And this post reached 1,175,756 people. And I posted this on March 18th at 7 a.m. This post crushed. There's another post that follows a similar style format that did really well. I put film a YouTube video, cut YouTube video into three to four clips, post clips to Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, cut those up into tweets, turn tweets, into LinkedIn posts, you get the rest. The insights on this did really well. So the reach for this was 151,000 people and you can see the rest of the insights on the screen. Another thing that I wanna to bring to your attention is carousel style posts. So what I mean by carousel style posts are posts that you look on Instagram and you have to swipe through those. Those do extremely well because what Instagram does is if you don't engage as the, as the viewer, if you don't engage with the first slide, it's going to show you the second and possibly the third slide again. So you have another chance to get on your consumer, your audience's feed to be able to get them to interact with it. So for example, a carousel style post that did really well for me recently was how to build your audience in 2023 using the purple cow method. Carousel posts do really well, especially if they're engaging, especially if that first photo, that first image is a really powerful hook, it'll get people to want to swipe with it. And oh, by the way, those are great posts for people to want to share to their feed and to their story because they want other people to see this message. It's almost as if you said something that they've been trying to say and the way that you put it was so concrete and so easy for them to understand that they want other people to hear their message that they were trying to say, but that you did a good job of understanding, if that makes sense. Long story short, do not rule out photos within your strategy. Number three, Instagram stories. Stories are a great place to build more of a connection with your audience. You can nurture your audience there. You could show them behind the scenes of your day to day. You could talk about corgis, cannolis, Manchester City, espresso, whatever that is. It gives the audience a deeper level into you. The other thing to consider is that Instagram loves when you use their features. So for example, if you're on the Instagram story and you see polls, you see the slider bar, you see all the interactive features because those actually require people to be interactive with your stories, not just tap through all the time and you don't get any views. Those require people to actually interact. Q&A boxes, another perfect example of getting people to interact. However, there is a issue going on where people are not getting a lot of views or maybe you are in this situation where your Instagram story views are completely throttled 
there is a secret that you can try and implement if you're up for it. I cannot guarantee that this will work for you, but you should at least try it. If you are experiencing low views on your Instagram story, what I want you to do is not post anything for the next 24 to 36 hours, nothing at all. You're essentially letting your stories reset. Now, when you go to post again, you are going to post something that is interactive, like that slider bar, a Q&A box, something to, for people to vote, a poll, whatever that is. What that is doing then is that is telling Instagram that your stories are hot, it's popping, like it's a nightclub, there's a lot of stuff going on here. It's going to bump that to people's feed. Now again, I can't guarantee that this will work for you, but I have seen it work for other people and I have seen it work for myself a little bit. So if you're someone who is experiencing low views on your story, give this a try. However, be careful because you are opening yourself up to a massive problem. If you are only using engaging style posts all the time, it's going to become abundantly clear to the viewer that you're just trying to get engagement because it, it just seems spammy and I wouldn't recommend you doing that all the time. I do recommend you doing that every so often, maybe three to five slides a day, just to get people to interact, get people to get more familiar with you and so on and so forth. Number four, engaging. When it comes to engaging with Instagram or with any social media platform, that's the goal. Social media platforms want you to be on their platform. They want you to engage. They want you to be present there. One of my favorite methods is Gary Vee's $1.80 strategy, and I'm gonna break it down for you so simply that a sixth grader can understand this. Gary Vaynerchuk's $1.80 strategy goes like this. You are going to leave your two cents on nine different posts from 10 different hashtags. I'm gonna say that again. You are going to leave your two cents on nine separate posts, so the top nine posts on 10 different hashtags. These 10 hashtags should be relevant to your consumer, the problems they're facing, the results that they want, or your niche, anything and everything to do with who you are targeting so you can get on their feed, they can see your content, and at the end of the day, you can be more present on social media. Another note on engaging, if you have comments right now that are unanswered, you are leaving so much money on the table and not just money, you are leaving engagement, you are leaving audience growth and you are leaving potential on the table. I can't tell you how much it grinds my gears when people complain about engagement and I look through their posts and they have 10 to 12 comments that are just unanswered. Imagine it like this. Imagine someone inviting you to their house for a party and the host just doesn't talk to you, right? You make a piece of content and it's like, hey, come to this party. I made this post, like come hang out here everyone comments or everyone comes to your party and no one talks. It's pretty weird. Don't treat your content like a party where no one talks. You want to be engaging. You want to be in on the comments. You want to be present. You want to show your face and you want to show your voice. If you are someone who is struggling to get engagement and I go through your page and I see comments that are unanswered, I'm watching. Number five, consistency. I know this probably is annoying for you to hear and you're like, oh, just be consistent. It's true. Consistency matters. When I'm talking to you about how I gained 20,000 plus followers on Instagram, it's because I was consistent every single day. It's because no matter what, no matter what family event I was at, no matter what holiday I was at, I still showed up. Because for me, it mattered to show up on Instagram. It mattered for me to show up on social media. You don't only show up when you're motivated. You don't only go to the gym when you're motivated to go to the gym. You go to the gym despite being motivated. You post on social media despite being motivated. And oh, by by the way, you show up on the days when you especially don't want to. If you are struggling to be consistent on social media, I'll say this to you. What's it costing you? Is it costing you more clients? Is it costing you reaching new people? Is it costing you helping one more person? What's it costing you? At the end of the day, the reason people change, the reason people want to actually start posting on social media, the reason people want to start doing something to better their life is because the pain of staying the same outweighs the pain of actually changing. So if the pain of your business staying the same outweighs the actual pain of changing and making a piece of content and showing up on social media, then you will change. Unfortunately for most people, it takes for them being broke to actually make a change. Unfortunately for some people, it takes for them being irrelevant in this world, on the online world, for them to make a change. Number six, stop focusing on the result and focus on the process. I didn't focus on getting 20,000 followers in a month. 
I focused on the habits of someone who would be gaining 20,000 followers a month, what they would be doing. They would be showing up every single day. They would be making content that solves someone's problem, that speaks to a, spe a specific person, and that gives them a reason to care. They would also be engaging with their audience because at the end of the day, they understand that attention is everything. Stop focusing on the blue check or the 100,000 followers or the million followers or 10K or whatever metric you're looking at. Start buying in to the habits necessary to achieve that result. If you wanna lose 30 pounds, Stop focusing on the 30 pounds because I guarantee you, if you get there, you're not happy. But if you focus on drinking water, eating better, getting steps in, going to the gym, you'll get there. Same thing with social media. You got to get your reps in. If you're scared to be on video, you have to get your reps in. If you're scared of what other people are going to think, you have to get your reps in. If you're scared of whatever other excuse you want to come up with, you have to get your reps in. I will suffocate every single excuse that you have because I understand the power that one piece of content has, whether it's to change your life or someone else's life. And at the end of the day, you have two choices, either give up or keep going. Both are equally painful. When you're 92 years old, looking your children and your grandchildren in the eyes, are you going to tell them that you did it or that you regret not trying? Because at the end of the day, you can either say day one or one day. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to hit the like button down below, smash that subscribe button or whatever you're into. If you struggle with making videos and you wanna get better at making videos, you wanna show up more on camera, you wanna use video and social media to grow your business, I have an entirely free Facebook group. It's called Video Content Made Simple. I will leave the link in the description below. It's a community for people just like you, entrepreneurs, business owners, coaches, who want to use social media to grow their business. If you struggle with anything and everything social media wise, this group is for you. I'll leave the link, like I said, below for you to join. I wanna see you there. I hope this video helped. I will talk to you soon. Be a fucking shark and I'm out.